Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. In this ultimate guide for Ron May, I'll be going over everything you need to know about her. Ever since Honkai Star Rail's release, we've been deprived of one thing. Amazing waifus? Nope. Hot husbandos? Definitely not. Waifus with broken necks? Uh, no as well. But a limited 5-star harmony character? Yep, that's right. After six long patches, we finally have our first 5-star harmony support character, Ron May. In this video, I'll be going over everything that I know about her, including her full kit, some rotations, recommended builds, which will include the light cones and relics, teams, Eidolons, and an Eidolon 0s0 showcase, which I'll be including my opinion on her as well. We'll start off as usual with her basic attack, Threading Fragrance. She has an extremely standard basic attack. It does exactly what you expect a standard basic attack to do, which is to generate one skill point, do a little bit of toughness damage, and it also scales off her attack. There's honestly nothing noteworthy about it, so let's move on to her skill, which is the perfect segue to talk about her skill. String Sings Slow Swirls. Her skill lasts for three turns, and it ticks down at the beginning of her turn. And the turns of the buff remaining are indicated by these little icons near her portrait. What's exceptional about her skill is that it's actually tied to Ron May, and will provide its buff no matter how often your DPS characters move, as long as the buff is still active on Ron May. This means that it is extremely easy to have 100% uptime on her skill. As for the buffs that it provides, it provides the entire team a very unique 50% weakness break efficiency. As we can see in this clip, Dan Hung and Byver Lunay is removing 50% more toughness from the enemy while Ron May's skill is active. It also provides a lot of bonus damage and additional bonus damage based on her break effect stat. This encourages you to build your Ron May with at least 180% break effect to maximize the bonus damage that her skill provides, which at level 10 provides a massive 68% bonus damage. Up next is her ultimate, Petals to Stream, Repose and Dream. It costs 130 energy and lasts for two turns. Her ultimate creates a field which provides her team a couple of key benefits. The first benefit is that it provides her entire team with the rare All Resistance Penetration. When any character in the team attacks any enemy, they gift our friendly enemies with a lovely flower on their head. This flower, the Thanataplum Rebloom, which I probably won't say again in this video, will activate when an enemy is recovering from Weakness Break. The enemy is then delayed by an amount based on Ron May's break effect, and they take damage equal to a percentage of Ron May's ice break damage. The flower can only be applied once per time the enemy is broken, as otherwise you'd be able to permanently stun the enemy in their weakness break state, so yeah. Then of fudging course we have her talent, Soma Typical Helix. Her talent provides speed to all her teammates, excluding herself. This detail is important as Ron May will need about 11 more speed than your DPS characters to outspeed those DPS characters. And when an enemy is broken, her talent deals a notable amount of break damage regardless of who breaks the enemy. And finally, this talent also provides Ron May with 5 energy at the beginning of her turn and it provides your entire team 20 additional break effect. Ron May's technique. Silken Serenade is an incredible technique. Casting it before the battle will have her auto cast her skill at the beginning of the battle. This is incredible as she actually also generates the standard 30 energy from casting her skill, effectively providing her a ton of extra energy at the beginning of the battle. And it also does a ton of stuff for the simulated universe, so your farming experience in the simulated universe will be a bit easier if you use Ron May. 
And now that we've gone through her kit, let's take a look at her actually buffing a character. With this 100% crit rate Jing Liu, and with just Ron Mei's skill, Jing Liu did 30.79% additional damage. And this next clip with both Ron Mei's ultimate and skill, Jing Liu did a massive 67.12% more damage. This of course doesn't factor in the extended weakness broken state to the enemy that Ron Mei provides, which will further amplify Jing Liu's damage output in the long run. So in total, at all trace level 10s, Ron Mei is providing the following. 68% bonus damage, 25% resistance penetration while her ultimate is active, 10% speed, 20% break effect, 120% ice break damage when the enemy is broken, and 50% ice break damage when the enemy tries to recover, along with weakness break extension via her ultimate. For trace priority, you should level her ultimate talent and skill. As for which you prioritize, it honestly just depends on what you value more. If you value her break damage, then you'll want to level her talent and ultimate, but if you value her damage buffs, then you'll want to level her ultimate and skill first. Her basic attacks aren't really important to level. As for her rotations, you pretty much always use her basic attack whenever she has icons next to her portrait. Then, you use her skill when it's her turn and there are zero icons left. This leads to an ENN rotation, which ensures 100% uptime on her skill. This rotation also provides your team with one surplus skill point every three turns, or one third of a skill point every turn. And at the start of a Memory of Chaos run, you should use her technique, and then use her basic attack. And depending on her build, this will allow you to immediately use her ultimate on her first turn, thus buffing the first attack cycle of your DPS characters. Next, let's actually start with her light cones for the build section because her relics are heavily dependent on her light cone selection. Honestly, she really just has two main options. Her signature light cone, Past Self and Mirror, which is honestly basically an entire character in itself, providing bonus damage, an extra skill point when she uses her ultimate, and 10 flat energy for your entire team at the start of each wave. Despite all this though, even with her signature light cone and maximum energy recharge, she is still 8.09 energy short from having a consistent 3 turn ultimate. Anyway, next we have her more free to play friendly option, the 4 star light cone Memories of the Past. Memories of the Past is a gacha exclusive light cone, but fortunately it's in all the gachas, so there's a really good chance you have this thing plus some refinements. This thing provides a ton of break effect, which is extremely valuable on Ron May, and also provides her a ton of energy when she uses her basic attacks. At Super in position 5, when combined with an energy recharge rope and the Von Wax or Penicone, this actually allows for consistent 3 turn ultimates without any external energy. Now you might be surprised to see me give both her signature Lycone and the 4 star Super in position 5 memories of the past the same rating of 4.5 slimes. That's because with her signature Lycone, even with a maximum ER build, again she's 8.09 energy short of having a guaranteed 3 turn ultimate. However, with the Super Imposition 5 Marys of the past, she can consistently 3 turn ultimate. And unfortunately, besides a Super Imposition 5 Memories of the past or her signature light cone, well, that's when things get a bit more blurry when it comes to what is recommended. All the other Harmony light cones provide different advantages and disadvantages that the others don't. For example, Cogs is the only other light cone that will guarantee 3 turn ultimate, but then you'll have a lot of trouble reaching 180 break effect. The other Harmony light cones will all provide different buffs, but you'll have low break effect and poor ultimate uptime. Still, if you don't have her signature light cone or the memories of the past, of course the other Harmony light cones are perfectly usable, but I'm personally giving them much lower ratings than the aforementioned options. Now that we understand her Lycone options, her builds are going to revolve around which Lycones you select. There will be two main schools of thought for Ron May. The first one being the Max Break Effect school of thought. This of course has lower ultimate uptime, but it does maximize her break effect damage as well as delaying the enemy. The other build is to maximize her energy recharge, which will provide her with higher ultimate uptime, but of course lower break effect damage as well as less delay on the enemy's action value. Either way though, you should definitely strive to get at least 180 break effect to maximize the buff from her skill. For the 4 piece relic set though, 
Regardless of which build you go with, I personally recommend the 4-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor. This set will provide 32% break effect, which is very helpful for reaching your 180 break effect goal. And for the 2-piece set, you have three main options, the Von Wack, Penicone, and Talia. The Von Wack and Penicone both enable consistent 3-turn ultimates when paired with a Super Imposition 5, Memories of the Past. The Von Wack allows you to effectively always move first as well which in turn allows you to go for the turn 1 ultimate in Memory of Chaos to buff your DPS's first attack cycle. Meanwhile, the Penicone is great if Ron Mei is with other ice DPS characters like Jing Liu. However, if you want her to go before Jing Liu to provide her the turn 1 ultimate, well, you'll need to have at least 11 more speed on Ron Mei since her talent's passive 10% speed boost doesn't apply to herself. As for the two-piece Talias, well, this is mainly for a pure break effect build. With the Talia set, you'll need 145 speed or more more, which interestingly perfectly aligns with having 11 more speed than your typically 134 speed DPS characters. So now this 145 speed requirement, which seemed pretty arbitrary on release day, is finally making a lot more sense. Anyway, now that we know all this, here are the main three builds that I recommend. The first one being a max break effect build, with either her signature Lycone or the memories of past at any refinement. For her relic sets, the 4-piece Thief and 2-piece Talias will provide the most break effect. For main stats, an HP% percent or defense percent body, speed boots, HP% percent or defense percent sphere, and a break effect rope are recommended for the utility that they provide. However, for the body and sphere, if you have pieces with a ton of break effect and speed rolls, then don't worry about what main stats they have. The goal of this build is to maximize the break damage that she deals and to maximize the time the enemy is delayed. She will usually get her ultimate up in 4 turns, which is usually just in time to reapply the flower on the enemy's head when you're about to break the enemy again. You definitely sacrifice uptime on her ultimate with this build, but of course you get the aforementioned benefits. The next build is a consistent 3 turn ultimate build, with a Super Imposition 5 Memories of the Past, and either the Von Wax or Penicone, and an Energy Recharge Rope. You will need quite a few additional break effect substat rolls though to get to 180 break effect. But this is definitely manageable considering that's pretty much the only stat that you're going for. Run may well be able to consistently 3 turn ultimate with her standard ENN rotation with this build. This provides much higher uptime on her ultimate's resistance penetration. Of course you sacrifice a good portion of her break damage and the enemy will recover a bit more quickly. Anyway, between these two builds, I definitely cannot say which one is better. I tried both of them in the New Memory of Chaos and they both led to the exact same clear times for my Dan Hung and Bibiter Lunae team. So just go with whichever you have access to or prefer in concept. Now the final build is definitely not as recommended, but if you don't have either her signature Lycone or the Memories of the past, and if you're not using a Super Mystery 5 COGS, honestly, if you're just using pretty much any other light cone, just build her with whatever you want, but I do recommend the Thieves and perhaps the Talias. You still want to target 180 break effect. The issue with other light cones is you'll either struggle with having enough break effect or even obtaining 4 turn ultimates. You'll often have her ultimate in 5 turns with the other light cones. Anyway, as we can see, the first two builds are certainly much more recommended than any of the others overall. As for substats, go for break effect, enough speed to be plus 11 to 12 speed on your DPS characters unless you're using the Von Wax again, and of course, effect res and survivability stats don't hurt either. So let's talk about her teams. As we can see, Ron May is a great universal support character. One thing to note is that while she is still great for hyper carry teams, she's overall what I would consider to be a modest upgrade for a hyper carry team compared to other 4 star harmony characters like Ting Yuan, Hanya, or even some 4 star nihility characters like Pella is specifically for Jing Liu. However, for dual DPS teams, she is way better than most of the other harmonies since she can constantly buff the entire team and enables the team to break the enemy much faster. For example, Ron May is incredible for supporting DOT teams, with Kafka plus another DOT character. DOT characters fully utilize all the buffs she provides, and she enables them to break the enemy much faster, which leads to even more dots on the enemy. She's also, of course, great for supporting a double DPS follow-up team. For example, Topaz plus Jin Yuan or the upcoming Doctor Ratio. Again, all the buffs that Ron May provides will hugely benefit multiple DPS characters since Ron May's buffs are tied to her own turns and not her teammates' turns. 
There are other dual DPS setups like Blade plus Zila as well that she is quite capable of supporting, especially against enemies that are weak to both Quantum and Wind. And interestingly, I think she is also great for supporting a hyper carry Blade as well. Since Blade, for once, fully utilizes all the buffs that she provides, her 50% increased breaking power is also incredible on characters that do a lot of break damage, like Dan Hung and Bybert Lune. You'll be shredding through toughness gauges like butter with the increased breaking power that she provides. Her Eidolons improve her buffs and break damage. If you do want her Eidolons, Eidolon 2 is a decent stopping point as that improves her buffs by a reasonable amount. Now for the showcase, I did take a reasonably built E0-S1 Imbiber Lune through the new Memory of Chaos level 12 one. This is a very imaginary DPS favored floor and Ron May's improved breaking capabilities is incredible for the Imbiber de Lune. Interestingly, I didn't notice a difference between her signature light cone performance with a max break effect build or a super Imposition 5 memories of the past with a three turn ultimates build. Both of the runs took three turns to complete with very similar feeling performances. I will say that there are quite a few situations though where the extra 10 flat energy from her signature light cone will allow characters to ultimate a turn sooner, like Imbiber's 140 energy ultimate cost. This will allow an Eidolon 6 Tingyun's ultimate to fill Dan Hung Imbiber de Lune's ultimate before he even moves for the first time, which is incredible for skill point efficiency. Anyway, considering both these runs took the same number of turns with just a casual attempt for both of them, needless to say, if you do have a Super Imposition 5 Memories of the Past, you'll have a great time with an energy recharge focus build for your Ron May. Even with a lower Super Imposition memory of the past, you'll still likely gain additional super impositions to eventually reach super imposition 5. And also you can always build her with a max break effect build even with the memories of the past. Another thing that I noticed about Ronmei is that she has incredible synergy with freeze, imprison, and entanglement. These will delay the enemies by even more on top of her ultimate delay. This in turn leaves the enemy in their weakness broken state for a very long time as well as providing your team defensive utility by having the enemy attack much less frequently. As we can see, Ron May was able to effortlessly support this hyper carry Dan Hung and Byron Lunay team to smoothly clear the new Memory of Chaos 12-1. So yeah, as expected, the new limited 5-star character lives up to her expectations. Ron May is certain to age well and be an incredible asset for the foreseeable future. She's very unique in that she improves your team's breaking efficiency, which will always be relevant in pretty much any battle. Breaking the enemy is always going to be a powerful and pragmatic option. It is worth noting that she does lose a bit of value against enemies that have phases where their toughness gauge becomes unbreakable, but such is the reality of any character, they will always have situations where they are good and situations where they are slightly less good. Let me know what you think about Ron May down in the comments below, and as always, check the comments for additional tips that I might have missed. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.